Hello and welcome. This is a video guide on how to optimize and boost the FPS for Halo Infinite. I want to point out the guide will definitely be helpful for high-end systems, but it will boost mid-range and low-end gaming PC systems with much more effectiveness. The guide will not only show you how to boost the FPS, but it will also improve game quality and system performance. In turn, this should help fix any lag or FPS drops or stutters that you could be experiencing whilst you play. But first and foremost, we're going to go over the very best tips, tricks and settings for gaming for Windows 10 step by step. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Step 1. Clean out your shader cache. I cannot stress enough how important this is. This basically cleanses and resets your stored shaders, which are basically tones and textures that your installed games save. Every time there's a new update, more are added on. Shader compiling can cause crashes, stutters, freezes and and even overheating in some cases. It uses extra memory too. Resetting your shader cache should always be the first thing you do before installing a new game or when a new update comes along. Now there's a link in the description for a video that will show you two simple ways on how to easily clean and reset your shader cache. Step 2. To ensure you get the most out of your PC whilst you game, I highly advise that you switch off every overlay and background application while you play. Things like Steam, Nvidia GeForce, Xbox Game Bar, Discord, even River Tuner, and any others that could affect the performance while you game. This is mostly for players with low-end gaming systems that need all the power they can get, basically. To turn the Steam overlay off, just head into the Steam setting menu, click in-game, and untick the box that says enable the Steam overlay while in-game. To turn off the Nvidia GeForce overlay, open up Nvidia GeForce Experience, click on the setting icon, go to general and switch off the in-game overlay for Xbox Game Bar. Using the window search bar, type game mode settings and then click the icon. Once the window is open, navigate to the left side and click Xbox Game Bar and of course set it off. Then you navigate back to the left and click on captures where you then need to switch off background recording and recorded audio. For Discord, all you need to do is open settings and on the left select overlay. You'll then just need to disable the option that says enable in-game overlay. After you've done that, navigate to advanced and make sure hardware acceleration is set to off as this actually uses GPU power to run Discord. Step 3. In the Windows search bar, type in Game Mode and click the settings icon. Once the window pops up, ensure Game Mode is set to On. For quite some time, there were issues with this particular setting, but Microsoft has now finally fixed it. So basically, if you're running the very latest version of Windows 10, make sure you turn Game Mode On. This will force all your PC resources on the game you're playing and suppresses any background activity from affecting your system while you game. Step number four. Navigate back to Windows search bar, type in graphics settings and click the icon. Now in here you should see an option for hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. This needs to be set to on and if it wasn't you will need to restart your PC after you turn it on. Once that's done navigate down to graphics performance preference and you will want to add Halo Infinite to your graphics performance list. Now with any Microsoft Store games all you need to do is under choose an app to set preference change it from desktop app to Microsoft Store app and the new drop down box will appear. All you then need to do is click that drop down box and select the application you want which in this case will be Halo Infinite and you add that to your games list. You then finally just have to click on options set it to high performance click save and then you're absolutely done. Step 5 Go back to the Windows search bar once again, type in Power Plan and click Edit Power Plan. At the very top, click Power Options and under Preferred Plans, ensure High Performance is selected. Step 6. If you have multiple screens, I would advise to only have one screen on when you play. If you press the Windows key and P together, you will bring up a menu that lets you select which screens to have on. Step 7. Background apps. Simply type settings into Windows search bar and click the icon. Then select privacy. On the left menu, scroll down all the way until you see background apps. Then simply switch off let apps run in the background. 
Okay, so now we're going to dive into the game and we're going to change a couple of things. Now with Halo, as well as pretty much any other game, we can just put everything on low and that would be fine. You'll get smooth performance, but the visual quality would just be very poor. But the whole point is to try and maintain as high a graphical quality as we can whilst squeezing the very most amount of FPS. So that's exactly what we aim to try and do with this particular guy. So starting with field of view, the ideal here, I think, would be between 90 and 110. Display adapter will of course be your GPU and the display monitor will be your, of course your primary monitor. Resolution scale should really just be left as default. The minimum frame rate I would recommend it as your monitor's highest frame rate and the same again for the maximum frame rate. Mine is 165 so I'd set both of those options to 165 apart from the minimum frame rate which the maximum is 120. With VSync or vertical synchronization if you want to be technical you should set it to off if you have a G-Sync or FreeSync monitor. If you don't have that option with your monitor, then having V-Sync on or off is really down to you. If you have it on, it'll stop your screen from tearing, but you will have input latency, which is quite low, but could give you a disadvantage against your competition, especially in multiplayer games. Setting it off will remove that input latency, but you might see some screen tearing. If you do set it off and you don't have G-Sync or FreeSync, then it is recommended that you cap the frame rate to no higher than 60 frames per second as that will help minimize the tearing. You should leave limit inactive frame rate unchecked. For anti-aliasing leave it as low. For texture filtering I'd go medium. Ambient occlusion is best either on low or medium. For texture quality I'd actually say medium or high. Geometry quality should be left as low. Definitely leave reflections off. Depth of field is best on medium. Shadow quality is absolutely recommended to be on low and also low for lighting quality. Volumetric fog quality should be set to off. Cloud quality should be on low. Dynamic wind should be on low. Ground cover quality can be set to medium. For effects quality, go low. Decal quality, go low. For animation quality, leave it as auto. For terrain quality, I'm gonna say medium. For simulation quality, I'm also going to say medium. Flocking quality can be left off. Leave async computer as disabled. And then in sensory, for blur, that should be 0%. Screen shake should be 0%. Exposure, should be set to 100%, speed line should be disabled, and then finally sharpening should be left as 60%. Of course, these settings really depend on your PC, so definitely play around and see what works best for you and your own system. I really hope the guide does help you in some way or another. If you do have questions, leave them in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.